So in the last section, we saw calculating aggregates and doing other things in J. This section will do that by group. And we simply pass the column names into the third argument of data table queries, which is by. And we use the dot parenthesis notation once again. So in this example, we have the value C occurring first in column A on row 1, and then again on row 4. So we add 1 plus 4, and that gives the answer 5. And that's the answer for the first group. So it's very important in data table that the groups are returned in the order that they first appear in the data table. Now we can also use functions in by, and here we're using the modulo operator percent percent. So modulo 2 is of course returning whether the numbers are odd or even. So in this case, the first row of the data table is an odd number, number 1, and that's grouped together with the other odd numbers in column A, which is 1, 3 and 5, so the sum is produced in the output. And then the second group are the even numbers on row 2 and row 4, and that appears in the output as the second group. Now there is a shortcut in data table, if you just have one item in J, or one item in by, you don't have to use the dot parenthesis notation. You can drop that and just use the aggregate directly and use the column name or even a function of the column name directly in by, and that's what we do here. So we do this quite a lot if we don't mind too much about the output column names. We can pass a row subset into i as well. So here we're passing the row numbers 2, 3 and 4 into the i argument and just doing the aggregation over those three rows. And this time the even numbers come back first in the answer because an even number occurs first in the subset of rows of DT that we're aggregating over. So that's pretty much it. Those are the three main arguments of data table, i, j and by. And the rest of the course really just expands on this theme. So now for some exercises to put these three arguments into practice.